Hi, everyone. This is uh, Richard Hanania with the uh, Pop Culture Podcast with Rob Henderson. Rob, how are you doing? Good, Richard. It's great to be here. How are you? I'm um, doing great, man. So uh, today we watched a uh, movie called Nobody. Um, it's uh, I saw it on Amazon Prime. It just, was just released, right? Yeah, I think it just came out uh, within the last couple of months. Um, yeah, I think the the sort of release dates were different with US and UK, but it's still like a new movie. It's um, I think it's even out in some theaters now. There was some kind of uh, uh, release uh, delay with with COVID and whatnot, but yeah, it's it's available for for streaming and and in some theaters. Okay, do you want to do you want to go yeah. into the uh, the plot of this movie a little bit? I mean, I, I guess we'll say that like you know we don't want to be careful about spoilers. So if you haven't seen it and you want to see it, you know, like pause it and go watch go watch the movie and come back. So we're not going to worry about spoilers. This is this is your warning. Uh, but go yeah. ahead if you want to describe the uh, just the plot. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, well. It's a I think it's a it's a plot that a lot of people are kind of familiar with where there's this sort of like uh, ordinary suburban, you know, father and husband who, you know, this, it's kind of funny. They've really sort of fast forward through establishing this character in the beginning of like yeah. a sequence of like 20 or 30 seconds of like, you know, him sort of clocking in, going to work, pouring the coffee, sort of like dragging the trash can out to the curb and barely missing the garbage <laughs> man as he goes by and sort of establishing yeah. like this is sort of his daily grind. Um and then uh, a home invasion occurs and these two masked uh, burglars enter the house in the middle of the night with uh, the Bob Odenkirk character. I think his, na- his name is Hutch in the in the movie. And he has a wife and a teenage son and a, and a young daughter. Middle of the mm-hmm. night, these guys, these, these two people break in and um, you think, I think this is kind of interesting. You think that uh, Hutch is going to do something about this. Um, because, you know, you've seen the movie, you've seen the trailer and he does nothing about it. Um, he sort of is going, I I think like at one point he's about to hit one of the burglars with this golf club and his son, his you know teenage son sort of tackles the other burglar and like has him in like a rear naked chokehold or something. And then he just doesn't do anything and tells the son to let him go. But then, um, sort of later on, there's another altercation in, in a bus sort of unrelated to that home invasion. Right. Which he then kicks these off this whole hoodlums. Yeah. these hoodlums, yeah, these sort of Russian mobster types with the black. And, there's, the, there's like four white. There's like <laughs> Russian yeah. and one black friend. They, they had the one black guy, and then you know, there's sort of more from there. I, I found it interesting because that was unrelated to the home invasion. I thought the whole movie was going to sort of be about sort that. Of that. Um, yeah. But well, he's, but yeah, he's, he's, he goes to track down. I mean, because he's coming back from tracking down the. Uh, is that what that happened? Yeah, he's tracking down the burglars. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Because right, right. he wanted to get the the kitty cat bracelet. And then it turns out they have like a kid on like an oxygen tank, so that's why they robbed him. And then he doesn't take uh, revenge. And then he's going back, and he gets he, he like uh, so the bus he's on gets attacked by these Russian mobsters and black guy. Right. Well, he doesn't get attacked, right? He sort of. So I think oh, yeah, what happened he's, is he's, yeah. he's he has like this built up this pent up energy. He's angry that he was sort of humiliated in the home invasion. He didn't do anything, right? Um, and, and like, I think there was this period of like, you know, his, his wife and remember the cop, you know, the, the cops come later and one of the police officers sort of says something like, you know, you didn't do anything, you know, if that had been my family, they would have been sorry, something like that. And so Hutch is sort of humiliated. And then, you know, he, he finds that like the, the burglars took the kitty cat bracelet from his daughter. Uh, it, it was like sort of in a bowl or something in the kitchen. And, you know, he, he wants to take this revenge, but then he sees, like you said, he sees the baby, he can't do anything. And I think he's like, he just wants to inflict some violence on someone. Yeah. He wants to get it out of his system. And he goes on the bus and these guys aren't doing anything. And Hutch, like, kind of provokes no, they're, them. They're, they're, they're thugs. No, they're, you're, they're not innocent. They're because they're, mm. they're, they're, they stop the bus. They, like, uh, intimidate the bus driver. The bus driver gets off. They're, they're commandeering the bus. And, like, there's, okay. like, one girl alone and she's scared. And so they're mm. gonna presumably do something to the girl. It's uh, yeah. He doesn't pick the fight. That they're you know they're bad actors. Yeah. Well, I, I think that isn't it kind of ambiguous though. I mean, I, I agree. They probably weren't going to you know well, they whatever. Yeah, they they weren't going to be they nice. They knocked a book out of a guy's hand. A guy was like reading a book or something, and they knocked. Mm. So they're jerks. I, I don't know if sure. they're dangerous, right? But they're they're jerks at least. Yeah. 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 I mean, they clearly weren't uh, weren't good guys, but. Hutch had the option like it's not like they pushed Hutch around and like you know he he very clearly went out of his way to like fight these guys he could have gotten off the bus and and had you know call it a night but he wanted something to happen here I think right 
And yeah. he had to take the girl with her. He had to save the girl because that, that was well, yeah. a big thing. There was a single, yeah, a young girl there. Uh, yeah, and he's okay, like, yeah. And, 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 but, but like the twist here is that he's not just like some loser who like can't fight or is a coward or, you know, whatever. He's like a badass. Like he's, he's like Rambo, right? He's kicking all these guys' asses. And we know, but he, we know he's a bad guy. We know he's like a tough guy. Uh, at this point, because when he's looking for those, you know, those uh, robbers, it's a man and a woman. He's, uh, you know, he's he's like, you know, he's cracking skulls. He's got a gun. He's he's moving around. And when he finds them, you know, he shows he they see his ID or something, and it's like some old intelligence thing. Anyway, so he's like, so like this is the twist, right? He's not like a. Uh, it's funny because it's Bob Odenkirk because this is Breaking Bad is like sort yeah, of it's all good, like man. It, well, yeah, but but Walter Wall, he's Walter White in this. Uh, and that he's the he's becoming the badass, but he is the badass. Yeah. That, that, that he was already. Yeah, that's the he had the that twist. history. So yeah, when he's tracking down the burglars, he goes into the the tattoo shop um, because he noticed that one of the uh, one of the burglars had a tattoo or something. Yeah, so he goes into the shop, yeah. tracks it down, and he shows um, somebody in there. He shows them like an expired ID. Uh, which is interesting. Like he shows them the idea, and it was very quick. He showed him, and the person saw it for like two seconds. The, it was the the old guy with the the Desert Storm hat, veteran guy. He he takes like two second glance, and he sees that it's expired. But then he sees that Hutch has a tattoo on his wrist. Um, yeah, that's what he sees. The tattoo, not the idea, right? Yeah, it was a uh, an off pair like uh, off pair suite of a seven and a two. Okay. Um, two playing cards. It was seven and two off sweet hand, which is um supposedly the worst hand you can get in texas hold'em um okay. it's, you know apparently like everyone who gets this hand you're supposed to fold because there's no way to win with that hand okay. um Important and i think like knowledge. yeah so it's yeah so the guy probably knew that he probably knew that that tattoo was probably associated with some like badass military unit um and that's when he like goes into the room and locks you know, locks you know, turns the dead bolts locks the door because he's assuming there's going to be some violence um but then the other guys in the tattoo shop see you know the old the old timer lock himself away and they get scared too. So I think that was like a, a neat little moment of like showing just like what this guy might be capable of. Yeah. And so the guy he beat, the guys who beats up, one of them is the brother. He puts them in like in the hospital. Right. And then one of the, his brothers, like uh, one of them, his brother is a huge Russian mobster. So like this old Russian mobster. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, we see the, like the Russian mobster in Russia and he's like in a nightclub and he's like a badass. Dude. He just like kills some random guy. He's got like a, an assistant or like a crony who's like a, a Ethiopian. So he's got a black guy too. They always, I like how they insert like these black people. Like they they, they found one in like the Russian <laughs> mafia. Like they had to they had to put one in there. And so uh, he's like he's got this you know Ethiopian uh, associate uh, who's born in Russia, um, but it's you know half half Ethiopian, it's half, half e Ethiopian. Russian. Yeah, his mom or his, yeah his mom was Russian and his dad was in the 1980 Moscow Olympics. Olympics, uh, yeah. Yeah, he ran for the Soviet Union. And so uh, so he's this guy. So he comes to America, right? And this is the this is the battle. So like he finds out who uh, Hutch is, or uh, he finds out that, you know, this guy uh, was the one who uh, attacked his brother. And then on the bus. Uh, yeah. And then they uh then what and then and then he finds him, uh he, you know, he finds him and then like he um you know, they try to kidnap him from his house. Like, you know, he escapes through doing some badass thing. Uh, and then he, um, and then he, and then he buys, he buys a business. He buys the business that he's working at, which is at his in-laws. And then like yes. draws the Russian mobsters. <laughs> it's so funny. To the business. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this movie is not supposed to be like a deep, uh, like a deep character development thing. It, it's, 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 you're watching it for like, here's a badass who's doing like badass things. And it's just like so awesome, right? I mean, I think that's what you're trying to do, right? So it's like a scene, like yeah. they, they, you know, they, they the, the, you know, the, the, and the sort of climax is, you know, the Russians, uh, their gang comes. He's killed the Ethiopian guy, so it's just the, all the Russians, and they, um, and they, they, they swarm his business, and he's like rigged it, right? He's rigged it, so like you know, and then he's shooting at them, and his dad comes along, uh, Christopher Lloyd, <laughs> the old, yeah. yeah. And then his dad was like in a retirement home and you think he's like senile, but he's also a, uh, like an old, whatever, FBI agent like or military whatever. operative or yeah, FBI, something like that. Yeah. And his brother, yeah. like you said, right. He's, he's like, they, they found a way to like insert these like non-white characters and they never explain why Riza 
is Hutch's brother. Like, you know, I was like, is this like they never is it, is it is like his foster brother or is it his like adoptive brother? But is it just a random black dude? I, I, didn't, I didn't even see that. Yeah, yeah. He said his, this is his brother. Like he refers to him as his brother and it's never explained. There's a picture yeah. of them uh, in his dad's house, the Christopher oh, yeah. Lloyd character of, you know, the little boy, you know, little Hutch and little Riza with the dad and i'm like what like what is the story there yeah, they, yeah. they never so, mentioned the mom either <laughs> so it's funny so yeah you have to yeah. set it up because it's funny because like throughout the movie he's talking to this like radio and there's this black voice on the other end and you don't know who yeah. it is right and yeah. um just this guy and he's like me and i'm not gonna come save your white ass if you get in trouble <laughs> and then like at the end where him and his dad are like fighting he's like man he comes in he's sniping the russians <laughs> he's just like he's the black guy <laughs> and he's like i told you i wasn't gonna save your white i did tell you i, was yeah. like, I don't know whatever yeah, your white yeah. ass <laughs> yeah yeah that is the dad bob odenkirk uh hutch and uh and, and Riza. Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah just shooting up the uh, you know it's silly really yeah they're shooting up the russians um and then uh yeah i guess that they I mean, that's pretty they much it. and then they have the the yeah. explosive ordinance thing like that's the sort of uh, explosive at the end that sort of saves the day yeah this um, is a close thing, yeah yeah, yeah, that was a cool. Yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, I think the yeah, that was pretty much like the movie. I mean, the, well, the Ethiopian guy from the beginning. One thing that was funny, like every time Hutch tries to explain his backstory, he has this little like this cute little phrase, a uh, short story long, and he goes into like, you know, I was in this unit and I did all this stuff, and then the guy dies on him. But I thought it was funny, like because he said this phrase, short story long, but the movie itself is actually really short, so you don't even have time to tell a long story. The, the entire movie is only ninety two minutes. Um, which I think like like right away as I was watching this movie, like two things occurred to me uh, about like why this movie seems to I, like on Rotten Tomatoes. It's got like really high scores from the critics and from the audience. It seems to be doing really well, um, like a lot of traction on social media, too, I think for a movie that's not based on any pre-existing property. It's not based on a comic book or it's not a sequel. Yeah. Right. It's like an, you know pretty original story, although like, you know, the plot is sort of, you know, uh, familiar to a lot of people. Um, but it's short, which is at odds with a lot of action movies today. I think like, you know, Black Widow is like two and a half hours long. Like the Avengers movies are like three hours long, but this movie is very tight. And then the second thing is there's no, like, it's not woke, right? There's no like political agenda other than like like some, they they insert these, yeah, they insert these black characters, but they're not like, you know, there's no like political undertones to it. There, there's no like agenda they're trying to push. It was just like an action. They do have a woman. Uh, they do have a woman soldier, right? Who comes in? Yeah. Oh no! When they when they broke into Hutch's house and they took him in the oh. car, it was a man and a woman, and he killed them. Right? Oh. He flipped over the car somehow or whatever. And oh, yeah, right. there was there was a chick there. Okay. Is yeah. I guess yeah, I don't know enough about the Russian mob. Is that like you know? Well, do they not okay. usually have like you know, yeah, know. women you women soldiers? Command- they, no, they, 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 she was with the commandos, like going into his house. So she was one of the people like holding guns. You know how, yeah. how many. Uh, Oh, like not even not even the U.S. military does it, by the way, like not in the special yeah. forces stuff, like not even the U.S. military, much less like, oh, you know, a mob does that. So well, you just reminded you. me that uh, in the beginning, the 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 burglar in the beginning, one of the robbers was a one woman, right? A woman. It was a male female yes. couple. Yeah. Yeah, it was a exactly. couple with the baby. It was like so, a Hispanic couple, by the way. It's interesting which race they, you know, they pick. They didn't make it. It was a really woke movie. They might have made it white. I think they could they could have gone black, but they went sort of in the middle, which I thought was a like, <laughs> in the like, middle. <laughs> in the middle. Was a pretty choice. Why, why didn't they make them Koreans, man? I feel <laughs> you know. I feel like our people aren't represented enough. <laughs> they could have made them, you know, uh, Jordanians or something. You yeah, know, and they had a foreign accent, by the way. They were they were noticeably I, right. They did. Yeah, they were they were noticeably not you know American born. Yeah. What what city was that was that in? Like uh, was I, that I, I, I wanna say Pencil I wanna say Pennsylvania. It just sort of seems like a Pennsylvania feel. Philly? Uh, At first I, I was kind of thinking LA, but I don't think that was LA. But no, like no, I don't I yeah, I don't remember what what, uh, what city that, that, that movie took place in. I mean it was uh, like a big city, you know, there was like a skyline kind of thing and I mean the Russian mob operates out of there. Uh, so should we look it up? Yeah, let's look it up. I actually don't remember. Like, yeah, yeah what? Okay, go uh, ahead. I, I, yeah, I think it's interesting enough to, uh, to yeah, to look into. Yeah, because like I thought the whole like blue collar working regular stiff thing that didn't seem like an LA thing. I mean, that seemed like a Pennsylvania kind of thing. Even the way, like, yeah. even sort of the way Auden Kirk talks seems more East Coast. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at it. They filmed it in Winnipeg, Canada. 
but they actually i guess don't really discuss or like have a set city location yeah so they filmed it somehow in in, in canada but i thought it was like yeah i thought it was an american city um which i guess is why i didn't recognize the skyline because it's not you know, it's not a u.s yeah. city and I'm well, a, they're, yeah it's sort fbi of, so i mean like, they're, they're not in canada we you know we know that yeah we the uh in the u.s okay well interesting yeah, probably not yeah uh, i guess it was better. not uh important ca- the city was not a character in the in the movie the way that like cities can be characters in in movies and tv shows yeah but, which which they can yeah. which is yeah that, that it's fascinating when they are because every american city is very chicago and la and like new york are you know all very different so uh yeah yeah so but it's a like we said so it's a short movie uh the point yeah. is to see how big uh a badass Bob Odenkirk is that you're right. You know, the sort of the, the family arrangements, like besides like throwing in the woman commando for the Russian mob, like, you know, the gender relation, even though the woman does work, she has a professional job. So she's like, you know, the wife, like, I guess this was what counts as like not woke these days, <laughs> but the fact that like the man is like the one who goes around fighting and protecting his family, which I guess is the last thing that men have left. And there's sort of like this, like masculinity, <laughs> toxic masculinity or toxic masculinity thing where he's like supposed to like beat up the robbers or like nobody will respect him. Right. So there's, there's that. Yeah. And that's like, it doesn't take a judgmental view of that. I'm not, you know, it's not yeah. like, it's not like there's women like everywhere. I'm just saying like, this was noticeable because there's one case they, at the end, they have like a hundred Russian mobsters come in and they're all men and they're all, they're all white. They don't have any more Ethiopian. So we shouldn't exaggerate it. It's like, these are exceptions yeah. and they're sort of plugged in there uh, at, at funny times. Uh, so it's interesting. So, so I read an interview with, with Bob Odenkirk about this movie. And he said that uh, this movie grew out of a personal experience he had um, and I think it actually was in L.A. So he was with his family. I don't know how long ago it was a few years ago or something, but there was actually a home invasion uh, mm. like his family was like held hostage and robbed. Really? And he said that he felt like sort of whatever, humiliated or embarrassed or something. And a cop actually told him, like actually said something along the lines of like, if that had been my family, I would have, you know, I would have messed those guys up. Mm. Uh, and then later on. Uh, Odin Kirk like partnered with some writers and started like flushing out like a, a screenplay about like you know a guy who gets humiliated in this way and sort of takes his revenge. So it was sort of like a revenge fantasy. But then he made himself uh, like have a background of like some you know deep state badass. So like yeah, it's, 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 it's very divorced from his experience. Seems like a, yeah, yeah. Well, I think of course this... you, you you have to make a movie out of it, right? An action film out of it. But I think like but what, I, yeah, but yeah, but what hurt well, him like? You know, mm. I think it was like if it was like you know, you'd think like he wanted to make it, it inspired to make a movie. It's like I want to mm. go get revenge, like as me as yeah. a person, I develop into somebody, right? Like Walter yeah. White does. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this one, oh, is I see like, what you're oh, saying, was, but he had this he was, this hidden yeah. backstory. That There's he no didn't, development. He didn't he's like he's he's already like that guy, and he was like yeah. he just wanted to retire and have like a nice. But this like dragged him back in because he got robbed and then he he ran into the Russians, right? And so that's yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess yeah. like, you know, that, that would have been a longer movie, though, right? Like of him having to like develop and take revenge and all yeah. that. And yeah, I think they wanted it to be like this sort of tight movie. Um, yeah. You can, you know, and, and, and it flew by too. It didn't even feel like 90 minutes. It felt uh, even a little bit shorter. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's very heavy on the action. I mean, that's, that's yeah. a lot of it. You know, so what, what I thought about this movie, what I think is interesting is it, it reminded me of like, there's a lot of movies like this. Like Amer- I haven't seen a lot of them, but I've seen like trailers for them. Uh, like, but like what I have seen is like American Sniper, um, hmm. where like you know this was like stuff that was really popular. I think people say like uh, Homeland and like Jack Ryan are like this. I've seen a few Jack Ryan. I haven't seen Homeland, but there's this idea, and it was especially popular like right after 9/11. And we're recording this you know, like two days after the fall of Kabul, uh, by the way, for, <laughs> for people to the Taliban. So it's it's a nice bookmark the on the right time to talk era. about hollywood movies <laughs> yeah so the uh and so like this was a popular thing where like well it, there was, it was sort of like this hero worship it's not like the politician it's not like the politicians are the people you worship or even like the top generals they're like you know they're, they're sort of they can be corrupt or they can be crooked but like it makes people think or they want to think that there's like this substrata of like badasses working for the nsa or cia or military intelligence and they are like they're the ones who keep us safe. And like in, in, uh, in, yeah. uh, in uh, American Sniper, there's this one scene where he's with a kid. He's like, "There are sheep 
Uh, there are uh, what was the other one? There were dog and there's sheep dogs. There's sheep like dogs, wolves. Yeah. There's sheep or sheep dog. Is that it? That like he wants to be a, the yeah. point is he's a because he's the American sniper. He is a he's a sheep a dog. Sheep dog he, he protecting the people. sheep from the wolves. Yeah. And at one point, at one point, Odenkirk does say, I think something like sheep dog, something like that. Yeah. He does say something like that. He says like, okay. wolves and sheep are there something I remember like distinctly uh, something that really rang that bell. Uh, when he, when he's mm. talking to those people, he burns alive. So like when the Russians come to his house. He like because he's such a badass, he beat them all up, and then like he's locking them in his face. <laughs> he's burning the house. And so, and, but he, yeah. when he's talking to them, like when when they're tied up, uh, you know, he's he's uh, uh, yeah, he says something like that. Um, and even there's a scene like where he's reminiscing on his uh, past, and like you know, it's like it's like his thing was like somebody had stolen money from the military. And his job was like to kill him. <laughs> I was like to execute him, oh, yeah. which I thought was pretty like strange. Like I didn't know that was like part of the the hero's job. The in auditor. These movies. <laughs> yeah. He's the auditor. Yes. That's yeah. The, funny, the last person you want to see. Which is like, <laughs> yeah, it's not even like I don't think that's a job. Actually, I think that was just invented for the movie. But I think people like the idea of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting that it's sort of like a throwback yeah, to the War on Terror era. The military when they discover yeah. Corruption. Like the sort of Zero <laughs> Dark Thirty, you know, like mid 2000s, like like the CIA black sites. And like, yeah. yeah, you can just sort of do whatever you want, but, but you feel good about it. You know, yeah. you have this, yeah, you have these guys who have, you know, the like sort of like Taken, right? Do you remember this movie? I have a very particular set of skills and like, you know, the, the, the sort of like undercover badasses who get pulled back into this kind of life. And yeah, I think there's like maybe something comforting to to a I lot of Americans so. to like think that those guys exist out there. Yeah. And, you know, I yeah. think so too. But what's funny is it's so divorced from the actual mission of like what the military does. So if you look at something like Rambo, uh, you know, he's going back and he's like looking for the POW. So it's somehow connected to like the mission, right? Um, yeah. And and so and then you have like you know World War Two movies, which like they still make like this, you know, Homeland or something like Jack Ryan. Like yeah, there are like terrorist uh, threats. Um, yeah, this one it's sort of like no narrow like... domain of expertise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, it's just like a narrow domain of expertise, and like you know, yeah. Hutch, like you know, he's well, the, the actor Bob Odenkirk is fifty eight years old, and like really, no matter how much military training you received, you know, twenty odd years ago, when you're fifty eight, you're not going to be able to take like seven Russian, like young Russian dudes on on a bus and in a fist fight. Like it's just you know, but like. Yeah. I, yeah, I, well, I guess one thing that I did like is that like it didn't make him into like a superhero because he actually took a lot of damage throughout the movie. Like he actually doesn't land the first punch. Like he actually gets punched first, and it's pretty ugly. And he gets thrown out of the bus and like lands in the broken yeah, glass. Yeah, that's what makes and, him like, a superhero. They're like you know they're they're you know they're yeah. knocking out all his teeth and they're you know beating the shit out of him. And like it doesn't matter. He still beats them all up at you know one time. I think that's that's yeah, part yeah. of the uh, uh, the superhero thing. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. So it's like, yeah, they, you know, and uh, like I thought Breaking Bad, it did it so well because like mm. Walter White, it, it's easy to fall into that where like you become like a superhero at some point. Mm. And there's a little bit of that of Walter White, but it doesn't really, mm. and this is a spoiler alert for Breaking Bad. If, if you haven't watched Breaking <laughs> Bad, like what are you doing? But you know, this is a spoiler alert, but it really doesn't do that until I think when he kills the uh, the Nazis, like when he sets up that contraption. Um, oh, yeah, and then he the tackles end. Jesse and then like it kills him. I thought that was sort of like a superhero kind of thing, but they saved it to the very end where everything else like before that he was smart, he was resourceful, but it never seemed like miraculous. And this was actually, yeah. this is actually brilliant. That's something that I loved about uh, Breaking Bad. But this is like, you know, this guy is just like a, like you said, a 60 year old guy who's, who's not like physically that impressive. He looks like a, like a normal guy at the gym or, you know, whatever. And, yeah. uh, and he, um, yeah, and he's just beating the shit out of you know seven Russian guys who's got who they've got weapons they've got like bottles they're swinging at him. Uh, One of them had a gun, I'm pretty sure. Him, it's just him, his elderly dad, and the black guy, his black brother, who are taking on like hundreds of Russian mobsters, and they break the place. And you know, but they're they're you know they're, they're, it's just them and their guns basically. Uh, so yeah, yeah it, it's um, yeah. So there's this is comforting for people, and yeah, and I think you know like it's like you can't sh- like it's like. Uh, it's funny because like, yeah, there's, there's no like war on terror undercurrent. There's no like idea that like Bob Odenkirk, uh, when he was an auditor was like protecting us from major terrorist attacks. They never discussed like where he served or what he did exactly. Or like, yeah, like what, where he was deployed. Yeah. They, they don't get into the specifics of that. Like they would have, like if this movie had been made 10 years ago, 
right? Yeah. Like they would have, they would have sort of like discussed, you know, his background or his deployments to Afghanistan or Iraq or something like that, or, or Desert Storm, something like that, right? But here, there's no, there's no real discussion of it. I mean, maybe we're supposed to like infer that it was De- Desert Storm because when, like, again, when he goes into that tattoo shop, there's the old timer with uh, the Desert Storm veteran hat. And I guess like that would roughly sort of place the Odenkirk character Hutch in in that time, but yeah, it's it's never made clear. It's never made. Yeah, overt, but I don't think, right? I think he, it had to. He had to be that. He had to fight in the uh, in Desert Storm because it, you know it was like it was like a symbol of whatever, like a you know, like a department or a you know a special unit or whatever. So you know, it didn't it didn't necessarily have to be uh, connected to any any war. Uh, but yeah, okay, I think good. this. Yeah. And so it's, it's like, yeah, it's like sort of a timeless story. It's like, you know, it makes you think that it's like going in one direction, which is like, you know, it's one kind of movie. So these are two, this is like the overlap of two kind of movies, right? It like makes you think it's one kind. Um, and it doesn't last for long that you think this, you think this for maybe, you know, the first 25 minutes or something until he starts looking for the people who robbed him. You think it's going to be mm. a movie where it's like beta male. Have you seen, I've only seen a, the first like five episodes, right? Have you seen like Fargo? Yeah, yeah, I, I watched Fargo way back when it was on. I think like the first season, or maybe the yeah. second one too. Yeah. Uh, oh, wasn't uh, wasn't Bob Odenkirk in the first? Oh season? yeah, he was I'm a cop. Sure. Yeah, don't don't spoil Fargo yeah. for me, by the way. I have all these. I, I don't know if I'm gonna finish it. I, I think it's sort of silly. I, I, it's a uh, yeah. But anyway, first season's we'll, we'll, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so right. the uh, yeah, and so the um, oh, I lost my uh, I lost my train of thought. So yeah, so you think it's yeah. one kind of movie, then it becomes like the kind of movie where he is a, um, you know, he's just like it's just like a badass, you know, superhero, uh, yeah, who's, um, you know, who's just doing cool things, and you're watching it because he's doing cool things. That's like the only thing you care. About. And you also have this sort of thing where like you let you like the hero because he's. I think this is another thing that flatters people. It's like he he does all these heroic things, right? He's like a, living this exciting life, but what he really wants to do is just settle down. And have kids yeah. and like do the nine to five, but he live the life that everyone else already has. <laughs> like, yes, you know, then, well, I don't know. I think at the beginning he didn't want it, right? Like, I think you know, maybe like the the sort of arc of the story in a way was like in the beginning he actually seems like a little bit run down and a little bit bored by his life, right? They have that sort of fast forwarded image of him like getting up in the morning to jog, then going to work, and the coffee and the, the taking the garbage out, all this stuff, like. He seemed like a little bit like, you know, going in, he's like a whatever he yeah. works uh, uh, in like, yeah, in, in the place. What is it? Uh, a manufacturing company, something like that. Yeah, I forgot, um, I forgot what exactly. So like, like, yeah, you see him with like the Excel spreadsheet or something where he's putting in prices and he's just kind of sitting there daydreaming or something. And then I think like after going through, you know, all of the fighting and the gunshots and the violence at the end, he was like, that was what I wanted all along was to have that life. And I, maybe he sort of forgot like how forgot to take it uh, to, to appreciate it or took it for granted or something like that. Um, oh, yeah. what, one thing I wanted to bring up was um, but, but actually at the, yeah. like say, at the end, he does go back to like living the, living the, you know, the dangerous life because they move into a house and then he's like, does it have a basement or a thing? Oh, which is have a basement. Like, oh right. Yeah. Which so I guess like is supposed to set it. up for a sequel. Huh? Yeah, maybe. maybe. I think yeah. even making like his life, like his cool life and his like home life comparable is like flattering to like, I think the average bozo who's just, you know, watching it. I think, I think that seems like, you know, it, it flatters them. So I think just putting them on the same level, uh, I think, yeah, people, yeah. I think that can appeal to people. People can relate to that too. You know, like, yeah, anyone can relate to like, you know, I think that's what that was the purpose of that establishing you know, shot in the beginning was sort of like, and he's just yeah. a guy who works a nine to five. Him and his wife are like maybe not in the best terms in their marriage, but they're trying to make it work and the kids and everything. The son kind of, you know, blows him off, but the daughter still likes him because she's really young and you know, hasn't hit puberty yet, doesn't hate him. Yeah. But that was so that was one thing uh, that I want to talk about um, is so in the beginning during the the home invasion, the son like actually, you know, like tackles one of the burglars and like like, you know, like gets him into like a, a chokehold or something. And the uh, yeah, and, and then the Hutch character like tells him to let him go. And then later, uh, you know, he tells the son to to go to the basement. Like, I think like, you know, take take your mom and go to the basement or something. And the son is like kind of walks with a swagger like he already knows. Like, yeah, I know. Like it, there was something interesting about like how his son was like really seemingly comfortable with violence and sort of like was okay with Hutch's plans and like knew about the basement, I think, or like sort of like understood danger. Oh, well, I, and, I, I missed this completely. I missed this completely, actually. And I, and I wondered, like, 
you know, what, 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 what was that? Like, it's, I don't think Hutch taught his son anything, right? Like, I think his son might've wrestled in high school or something like that. Like, but I don't, it, I don't think that explains like why he would be comfortable tackling a burglar, knowing that the other one was holding a gun. Um, yeah. Was this like, uh, you know, sort of the, the movie giving, uh, giving implicit endorsement of sort of behavioral genetics, you know, like Hutch is this badass, And so his son like inherited yeah. badass genes or something. Well, I don't know if he knows, yeah. I don't know if he knows, does he know, like there's a gun? I mean, does he know that? Uh, oh, I don't know. There are two robbers. We, do we? Do we know? Like, well, oh, no, well, he didn't know at the beginning that there was a gun, but then later, him and his dad see the other robber pointing the gun at the son, who's sort of rolling around with the guy on the ground. Yeah, no, they know the that. that, that point, so he's already tackled him though at that point. Yeah, but but he doesn't let up, right? Like once he sees the gun point, I think a lot of people would see the gun, freak out, and and back away. But the they son, would, like, but I think, but I think you're you're if you've ever watched a movie, if you're like wrestling with someone and they don't want to shoot you, like it's probably good to stay in, intertwined with them actually if oh interesting yeah, yeah yeah okay well then i think that's, in this case that's even more like sort of interesting that the son would even know that right like i don't think a lot of you know teenage boys wouldn't necessarily do the math on that they would just sort of like you know get scared of a gun yeah but this kid so was, uh, was comfortable with yeah why not yeah, yeah why not a <laughs> i don't know not a... just throwing yeah. it out there yeah why not you know? oh, yeah this movie's not woke right so <laughs> but you're saying you're saying the son sort of knew well, what's the basement thing? I, I I didn't catch I didn't catch that. Well, I can't it? remember exactly. So I don't know if it was in in the very beginning. I, I think it's when all the Russians come to the house, uh, like midway through the movie, uh, when the mobsters come to the house. Oh, this was right after Hutch. You know, Hutch is making the lasagna, and then he looks yeah. out the blinds in the window, and the Russians are, and then he and he says to the son, like you know, take take your mom and your sister, go to the basement. And, you know, the son is like, yeah, OK. And he like he doesn't question it. He's not like, what the hell are you talking about, dad? He's like, yep, got it. Like he knew. And yeah, I found like just both of those aspects of like, you know, his, his willingness to like, you know, like tackle a robber and to like sort of be OK with leading his family and protecting them in the basement um, on his dad's orders. No, but he thought, I wondered what he that thought was his about. Dad was a, he thought his dad was a, like, I, like, OK, I, I just have to say I don't. Like I didn't, that didn't strike me. Like I don't know. Like I thought that like Hutch just put them in the basement and they all just you know went went along with it. Um, yeah. I didn't notice anything interesting about the son, um, mm. but I, I don't know. If I, like does that make sense? Um, his uh, because the son like what's the son clear is know. yeah the son thinks the th- son thinks his dad's a pussy right that the son yeah. thinks that his dad's a wimp and like he yeah. sort of, there's scenes where he's like you know not respecting his father or whatever. Um, yeah. So you're, I think what you're saying is like. He sort of knew that like something was going down, and he was like going to trust his dad to protect. Like, but like, yeah. If he's a tough guy, yeah. If the son's a tough guy, he thinks his dad's a whip. Why would like, he should... listen to him? Yeah, there was something odd about that, and, and yeah, the son they... doesn't know, but the but the mom knows. Yeah. So I the mean, mom but, knows but, like, about people, how just yeah, passed. So the dad comes in. You know, you know. I'm just thinking now why it's not believable. Because I was going to say the dad comes in and he's acting with like he's got a you know he's got a he's sort of swaggery, right? Um, and so like, maybe that's like why his son reacts to it. Right. His son like, you know, goes down in the pecking order because of how his dad's acting at the moment. But if that was true, um, the son should have known something about the dad. He should have been able to into it, uh, that that his, that his dad was this really tough guy. And it doesn't seem like that. It seemed like he was really convinced that his dad was just this big, you know, wimp and like, you know, this one thing, like, because what his dad did, what what Hutch did was not that cowardly. It's like they had the upper hand and he decided not to take it. It's not like he peed his pants or like ran away and like hid in the basement or something, right? Um, It was just like- sort of yielded. Yeah. It's like, let him go, son. Like he had him and- uh, and uh, where was the gun at that? Well, he- The gun gun was was pointed at them, right? Yeah. And he, and he and like the which is the other. almost sort of badass. Like you know, you still have the gun, and we have nothing. And like you know, we don't. We're think still you're going major. to let you yeah. go. Yeah. So it, it's sort of like that. Um, and not only that, Hutch knew that the gun was empty. Remember? Well, yeah. But his son doesn't know that at the time. We don't even know that. The viewer doesn't know that. Uh, oh, until right, later. right, right. But but and Hutch so, yeah. knows. And yet he's still, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Hutch, is, yeah, Hutch is, well, no, the, yeah, it's unquestionable that Hutch is not a, is not a whip, right? We do know that. Yeah. It's just whether, it's about what the son, what the is son believes. So, so uh, that's another thing. So, so the, the wife, um, I can't even remember if they gave the character a name in the movie, but she, 
she knew about Hutch's past, right? Like, you know, when, when she's sort of cleaning up his wounds after yeah. his fist fight on the bus and like she sort of like makes some comments indicating that she was aware of like his past and what he used to do. And so, you know, I guess one possibility, you know, probably unlikely, and this is maybe just sort of like, uh, you know, retconning it or something is that uh, in between the scenes, we never see it, is that after the home invasion, the mom talked to the son about the dad and like explained to him the reason why the dad didn't do anything. Like, here's the reason why your father said to let him go and didn't do anything is because your dad has this history and doesn't want to reveal whatever. Like, it's possible. Um that was the only thing I could think of for like why the son had sort of changed his attitude toward his dad is that maybe the mom revealed something to him off camera yeah. uh, that, that the viewer never saw, but maybe that's too much of a stretch. Mm. Yeah. Cause yeah, we yeah. don't see, I mean, I think they would have, I think cause you don't see anything besides that. It would indicate that besides that one basement scene, which I didn't even see. So I, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. It was, it was very um, quick. The yeah, and so yeah, she's like yeah, she's cleaning him up, and she says like he says something like you know, just like just like old days, right? So just like old times, yeah, yeah, something like that. I mean, like his relationship with his wife is interesting. Like right after the home invasion thing, he says to his wife something like you know you're gonna have to trust me or like you know something like that. Like you know you're just gonna have to have confidence in me or something like that. You know, and then like literally, you know, I think later that day, oh, I think it was about tracking down the home invasion people or something, the robbers. And then later he gets into that fight on the bus. Um, and I was wondering the whole time is like, does the does his wife know that those wounds are from a like a random fight in a, on a bus? Like it, it wasn't it wasn't like fighting with the burglars. Like that was something completely <laughs> different. He, he like, you know, those two things were not connected. Uh, but I wonder if she's thinking like as she's cleaning him up, does she think that that was that's what it was about? Yeah, because he know, never comes clean on that to her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, I think you know. Yeah, I think like she's yeah. This is sort of the non woke aspect of the movie, I guess. She's just like a wife, and like like you said, she has a career, she has an office job, and she like sort of doesn't ask questions, and she just knows her like husband is tough, and you know she's there to support him. Uh, yeah, we yeah. never. I don't think we give her like she's not given a name really. Like, yeah, she is like very much a sort of supporting character, which is like yes, yeah, a sort of throwback to the old action movies. Whereas, like, yeah. I think like a lot of if this movie you know was sort of more more woke in some ways, like you know sh- she would have been the badass to take the take out the robbers because her son yeah. was too afraid, or and, and the husband didn't do anything, something like that, right? Like a Black Widow kind of character. Yeah. What about the what about the Rush the Russians and the uh, portrayal of the Russian mob is funny. So they, his Russian nemesis of the movie. Would well, you remember the guy's name? I, I don't remember the guy's name. It was something like uh, the boss. You're talking about the boss, right? The Russian boss. Yeah. I, well, he's also he's like older than Hutch, right? He looks like he's like 65, uh, and he's also sort of a Superman too, right? He like you know kills people pretty easily and just like you know goes on with his life, uh, and he's not as tough as you know he's overmatched uh by hutch um but yeah he's like you know he's like sort of there to be his nemesis and, and it's funny like you know and so I, one scene i thought was funny was like when he uh the russian boss has like uh the girl hacker or whatever computer you know analyst whatever she look up like a hutch and she finds out and she's like i quit he's, he's, he's too tough <laughs> and like it's sort of like in these movies it's like there's this like hierarchy of just like pure toughness and it's not like it's like in this universe, like Hutch doesn't like die from a sucker punch when he's fighting those seven guys. Like something like that doesn't happen. Like everything that happens is like part of the natural order. We're like, okay, the Russian guy is like here in his superhuman ability and toughness. Like Hutch is here. Okay, they face off. Like Hutch is gonna be. It's not like a straight a stray bullet is not gonna kill Hutch, right? And the Russian guy yeah. is not gonna be robbed by some teens in the United States and killed or something. Because like each guy, yeah. it's 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 like a very um, you know, a lot of action movies are like this. A lot of movies that are like this, but it speaks to something interesting because like it's this hierarchy and this hierarchy is not subject to like any kind of circumstances, right? It's like these robbers are bumblers. So like, they're not going to kill Hutch. Like that's not going to like, it's not going to go wrong. It's not going to happen like that. Um, right. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. This is just something I think, you know, people take comfort in. It's sort of like a very conservative sort of instinct where like there's this hierarchy and this hierarchy, it's like a one based on merit, uh, but it's, it's not very permeable right it's yeah. like you know like this guy's better than this guy so he's gonna get the the best of him right he's just a tougher guy yeah there is like this sort of comfort food aspect to this i watched um somehow i came across this the other day uh just watching uh tv with my girlfriend we stumbled on um olympus has fallen 
Uh, this is that Gerard Butler movie from like 2013 or 2016 or something like that a few years ago where like Gerard Butler is like a Secret Service guy. The, the White House gets overtaken by the North Koreans and Gerard Butler goes in. He's like this, you know, commando badass uh, and currently, you know, former commando, Secret Service and like saves the president, saves the day. But like, yeah. yeah, along the way, he's like taking out all these sort of minions and these low level guys and then like all the way gets up to the top. And it's like, you know, the sort of uh, the the top North Korean military, like that's sort of like where he meets his challenge and like has a lot of difficulty and overcomes it and saves the yeah. day. And yeah, I think there are like a lot of action movies are like this, right? Where like the guy goes through like all of these sort of foot soldiers and these low level guys. And then you get to like the almost like a video game. It's like the boss. And that's like what whether you question whether the hero can can take him out. Although interestingly, in this movie and nobody, there was never a like which I guess maybe is why the movie was kind of fun is that there's never a, a moment where like like the all is lost moment. Like a lot of these action movies, it looks like the hero is about to die or like there's something like they can't come back from like, you know, whatever the the villain is like holding them over a cliff and you don't see how there's any possible way they can get out of this, this situation. Yeah. But and nobody was like, like pretty straightforward. We're like, Hutch is a badass. There's nobody's going to hurt him. There's never going to be a moment where you fear that he's not going to survive this movie. Yeah. Yeah. When you know, after you know who he is, right. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. Like the risk, the, the suspense is sort of, gone you're right and mm-hmm. they don't even they mm-hmm. don't even kill like his dad or his like black friend you think maybe that was what I, I was for sure his brother or his dad was gonna die like i thought his dad right because he's old and he's had his time and he's living in a nursing home and i thought like you're, they're gonna introduce some kind of pathos or some emotion here where like his dad dies you know 15 minutes before and then hutch gets revenge and and kills you know avenges his father's death or something but yeah. <laughs> you're right. like that doesn't even happen no no yeah it's the guy just goes a, back to the retirement home yeah just goes sits back yeah. in front of the tv <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so it's uh yeah i so i mean i'm interesting it's interesting that so critics really like this movie i mean i'm, I'm sort of a little bit surprised i mean i would have thought yeah. this you know because like the way we you know we talk about it, i think this was my impression it's not that sophisticated like you know i don't think it's like it doesn't have deep character development um you know the scenes are cool you know it's fine as far as that goes um but yeah, I mean, do, are people reading like maybe you've seen the critics? I you know I haven't. Are people reading some kind of like deeper message in it, or it's, are they basically analyzing it like me and you are? Uh, I I don't know. You know, I so like I said, so I read that interview. I I think I read like one or two reviews, but but not in any of like the prestige media. I didn't read like the New York Times or anything. Um, does New York but, Times but, review, yeah. does New York Times review movies like this? Usually, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm assuming they do. Yeah, I mean, this is a I think it was a pretty, you know, Bob Odenkirk is like a pretty well-known actor by now because of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. And I would imagine like, you know, he has the sort of pool to get those kinds yeah. of reviews. Well, I, don't, but, I don't know how many movie yeah. reviews that like out of the New York Times does. I've never I haven't seen one in a while. Maybe they do all the time. But I, yeah, I yeah, they know. usually yeah, the Times, the Wall Street Journal, like all of the sort of prestige media, they usually review, you know, whatever's whatever is hot right now. And I think this movie is like. Uh, like Rotten Tomatoes, I think has it at like 70 something percent among the critics. And, and yeah, like, like you said, I was actually surprised. Like at first when I saw it, saw the, the Rotten Tomatoes, uh, reviews. And then that's when I messaged you. I'm like, Hey, do you want to watch this? Cause I, I was surprised to see like an action movie get uh, high marks from both the audience and the critics. It seems like more and more nowadays you're seeing this bifurcation where like, if the critics like something, the audience hates it and vice versa, simply yeah. because the tastes of ordinary people and the elites are diverging more and more. So when when they agree on something, especially an action movie of all things, um, I was like, okay, this is probably pretty good. And and yeah, like after I watched it, I'm like, why did why did they like? Is is it because <laughs> is it because so, they put Riz as you know as his brother? Like they don't even question why he has a black brother. They're just like, I I, I don't know. Like w- w- what was it that uh, that the critics found? Um, did yeah? Did they find some kind of hidden symbolism? Did they like find? Well, a I just message? I just found the New York Times. So whenever a cultural thing, like a movie review or something comes to my attention, it's usually because of probably you two, some kind of crazy woke thing, right? And I thought mm. that like this had taken over like movie reviewing, but I just looked up the New York Times uh, uh, movie review and the, it's short. It's like four paragraphs. Uh, and it just seems like, uh, it seems like a, you know, sort of fence, it's written in fancy language, but it, you know, with long sentences and big words. Uh, but it's like it seems like positive. You know, it, mm. it just sort of it summarizes the plot. It spends a lot of time summarizing the plot. It just sort of gives technical like uh, discussion of like the action scenes, and then it has like sort of a uh, clever ending. Uh, there's nothing about you know race, gender, orientation. Like I'm you know I'm surprised. I you know I'm just skimming this right now. It's just enough that I can just look at it right here. Uh, 
Yeah, so maybe like their movie reviews are just sort of uh, like I'm surprised. Uh, this is the kind of movie review I would have thought would be in like a local paper. I would have thought a New York <laughs> Times review would just be about like why are there no women of color or something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. The uh, yeah, maybe the maybe the, well, the sort I mean, of critics. Yeah, you know, as a slight uh, critique, as the bodies mount and Hutch becomes a target of a karaoke singing Russian mobster, the movie feebly tries to pardon Hutch's implacable brutality. I'm a good man, a family man, he informs an adversary, but he's a counterfeit regular guy in a movie that's openly contemptuous of such men, a sleeping assassin who's finally free to scratch a long suppressed itch. Now at least Hutch is alive. Uh, more important, he now he's a man. So it's a sort of like, but it's not, you know, uh, it's sort of like, okay. but it's like, yeah, it's not, it doesn't say toxic masculinity, right? It's it's, it's like a critique. Sort of a snarky, like a, like a more sophisticated way of saying toxic masculinity though, right? Like he's finally a man. No, because the but... idea... Yeah, it's more sophisticated, but I'll, like me or you could write this, I think. Like, yeah, yeah. It is contemptuous of like you know regular guys. I think that's sort of it. it yeah, it does buy into that, and you could call that tax, or you could say you know whatever the. Uh, uh, Which is it's kind of interesting that they put it that way because the New York Times is kind of contemptuous of regular guys, but I guess uh, maybe that's why they uh, found so much to like about it is because. Um, you know, the movie doesn't like regular guys, or at least that's what they think. And here's, they don't like regular guys, so we're on the same team. Oh, here's um, funny. Here's something funny. Yeah. At, the, at the bottom of the New York Times review, they says, rated R for guns, knives, explosives, and terrible karaoke. Uh, running time, one hour, 32 minutes in theaters. Please consult the guidelines. There's a link outlined by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention before watching movies inside theaters. So they're giving you a nice warning, a nice okay. disclaimer. It's good to see that. Yeah. Good to see that in the Times. Well, I I, so I, I, you know, I always wondered like how the Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> uh, scores, like how they how they categorize reviews uh, as, as like positive versus negative, because I think they just have that sort of like whatever that on off, like it's either good or it's bad. Um, and I, I guess like that New York Times review, even though it's a little bit snarky, I think that would be categorized as good, uh, like a good review, a positive review or more positive than negative. Um, and so I always wondered, like, how they determine that. And if like maybe a lot of critics were like that, you know, a lot of critics were just sort of like summarize the plot, make a couple of, you know, snide remarks, but generally say it's, you know, it's a serviceable action movie. And then like Rotten Tomatoes, it just inflates the score and they somehow get like a 76 percent. Um or yeah. like, you know, how, how that works exactly. But I would imagine like, I don't know, the Wall Street Journal or like National Review or something like maybe the more sort of right of center outlets would, would be much more favorable to this movie. But but I would be curious to know, like, I mean, whatever, like what are like the hard left uh, outlets that review movies um, like was it like Teen Vogue or something like what would they yeah. give? What would they give for this movie? Like, how would they we discuss have it? A I can easily imagine what review, critiques we should just it. have a podcast of reviewing movie reviews. We should just watch movies. Each publication is saying that would that would be fun. Um, Reading yeah, the tea leaves. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know about um, I don't I don't know anything about that running. Uh, uh, oh, wait, there's another there's another review. There's a link to another. Is this like the. Uh, Better call Bob Kirby is out for revenge. Yeah, there's a longer review actually. Oh no, no, it's an interview with Bob Odenkirk about the movie. Maybe that's the one I saw. I think I did. Yeah, the interview might have been in the, in the New York Times. Yeah. That might have been. What do you think about I mean, I Odenkirk? Is it's weird to uh, compare him to uh, uh, like the character I know him most from, which is Better Call Saul, right? Well, yeah. Did it did it sort of make it hard for you to buy this thing that he was this you know just this uh, uh, really tough guy when he's sort of a slimy lawyer? uh in this well, other show okay so so i really only know odenkirk from from breaking bad which i loved and i watched i think i watched the first two seasons of better call Saul, and i just couldn't get into it um oh, that's and so fascinating. Yeah, I, I i uh yeah I, I totally yeah it didn't uh it didn't ruin the sort of whatever suspension of disbelief or anything like i i liked this movie i i sort of bought into it i mean you know for, for the most part as much as you can for any kind of movie like this so it didn't really make it difficult for me that's interesting. Um, you don't like Better it. Call. That's interesting. You don't like Better Call Saul. I, you know, I think it's. Yeah. I think it's really interesting. I think it's. I think it's I, a fascinating. I think there's a lot that's subtle, and psychological, and fascinating going on in that. In that. Show. I may have to give it another try. Um, but yeah, I watched back when it first came out, like whatever, 2014 or something. I I tried the first couple seasons, and yeah, it, it just didn't hook me. But at some point, maybe I'll I'll give it another try. Um, because I know a lot of people love this show. A lot of people are fans of it. So there might have been something I missed. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, I think we've said pretty much most of what we can say about uh, uh, nobody. 
Um, okay. Is there a, yeah. Anything, any, anything else you want to, you want to talk about in the movie? Anything else you want to bring up? No, I think like, you know, the movie itself is so short that like, you know, I was, you know, I'm almost surprised we were able to sort of, uh, to discuss that yeah, at length, all of the, the different <laughs> angles of it. Uh, I was a little worried actually, like, you know, this movie is so short. Are we really going to be able to have like a, a, a sort of a substantial discussion about it? But, oh, I think, I think this was good. Um, yeah, I think we yeah, sort of I think, I think, as, what's as a movie, I think, you know, what I found most interesting to me, the movie was like, the plot is not much. There's not much there. Uh, it's pretty thick. I still think it's worth watching. Like anybody who's listening, who you know, even though we spoiled the shit out of it, if anyone wants to, I think it's definitely worth, you know, paying a couple bucks or whatever for Amazon Prime to check it out. Yeah, I yeah, I think. Yeah, it's, uh, but I think, you know, the the sort of the culturally uh, what it says, it's fascinating. I, you know, I think just watching these movies is sort of good to know, like, you know, if I was just on Twitter all day. I would think every movie was about like black trans lives. That's what I would think if I was just on Twitter <laughs> and I didn't watch movies, right? I didn't watch action yeah. movies. It's sort of you're you're uh, you know you get older, you know less, right? About yeah. like what's going on in the culture, uh, and it's good to just you know try to keep stay plugged in. And I, you know I think what's fascinating about. Yeah, this movie, like I said, it's sort of this 9-11 war on terror thing. I mean, there were some you of the movies. It's a back to the mid two thousands. Yeah, it became more of a. I mean, it became more of a thing after nine eleven. But there was a in like the nineteen nineties. You know, it, there was like you know people had to find like more fanciful like uh, uh, bad guys because like you just needed somebody, right? Wasn't there one where there was like it was like Serbians were like. Uh, Get a, you know, nuke the country or something. There was some big movie in the 1990s. Was like this. so they just had to find like whoever was in the news, like Serbians or Saddam Hussein or or whatever. And well, then for, for a period, it was like Middle Eastern guys, right? In the mid 2000s, it was usually like you know some. Well, often it was like Middle Eastern, but then there was like this sort of rich white guy who was behind the scenes pulling the string somehow, um, you know, partnering with you know whatever whatever terrorist organization. But you know, I think like yeah, when you don't really have like. A, a sort of uh, a villain, like a like a villain that's sort of looming large in the culture, which right now I guess we don't really have one. Uh, the Russian mob is always, you know, is always a safe bet. That's sort of like the default, you know, who can be the bad yeah. guys, you know, yeah. Russia. Like some the, another thing that wasn't woke, another thing that wasn't woke about it, they didn't have like the Russians manipulating the election or something, which you might think <laughs> that, that if it was a little more political, it would have it would have no. done. Or there was no or political they, discussion either. Wait, wait a yeah. minute. What, what last, so, so who did who did Hutch vote for in twenty twenty? <laughs> uh, who did that family vote for? Right. It's sort uh, of like this. So, so Hutch definitely. I mean, I don't think he went to college. Right. He was just sort of like this. Uh, he wasn't like quite blue collar, but he worked in a blue collar occupation. Uh, he's, he's a he's a Trump uh, guy. I mean, the, you think the, he's the, a Trump you guy? You know, just the, like the things we talked about, like the like the he's bothered when his son thinks he's a wimp. Uh, uh yeah, so you know, that makes him a Trump guy. <laughs> he could vote for so. Biden and still be worried about that. But yeah. his well, his wife though is a real estate agent, right? Like, uh, she probably went to college. I, I mean, she's like, she gave the impression of someone who did. So maybe real estate she, agents you know, tend to be like a little a, more. Uh, I think it's a little bit more of a you know conservative thing. They're, they're, they tend to be independent. You know, they're doing something practical. Um, okay. Yeah, look, uh, yeah, okay. if you do like statistically, like special forces guy, I mean, like, you know. The, okay, yeah, re- veteran, yeah. If you just want to do that, I mean, it, it's like, you know, whatever city he's in, I, you know, I think it's there. And the, then if you want to like find some kind of thing, there was this funny one, we, you know, King of the Hill, like who would Hank Hill vote for, which I had very strong <laughs> opinions on. And you never watched King of the Hill, which is an awesome show, which is like, I think a great piece of right-wing propaganda that everyone should check out <laughs> if they haven't seen it. I mean, it's the most right-wing show, like one of the most right-wing like mainstream shows that I've seen like since I've been a kid. Um, right. uh, but, so, uh, so Hank Hill, he voted for, he would have been a, a Trump supporter or Biden supporter? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, no, I say absolutely Trump supporter and then other people don't okay. want to believe it. And I gave them a lot of uh, reasons why, why he would be, uh, but, but there's a, a Texan. Uh, He's a Texan. Uh, he's yeah. um, well. We could talk about it. We could talk about it some other time. Yeah, yeah, I, have, yeah. I have a lot of arguments. The whole other discussion. That I, yeah, that I argued with people. <laughs> that I argued with people on, on Twitter about. But, but there's like a demographics versus like personality thing, and like most people just go with their demographics, right? And so you have to start with that assumption. Um, and so then you think you that demographics with, are a stronger predictor than personality for for, oh, yeah. for voting? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. That makes yeah, sense. I mean, the correlations, okay. like you hear about conscientiousness, like the correlations, like 0.2 or something. I mean, it's not like, it's not a big, and like being like a non college white male and like, you know, Alabama will give you like 90% or, you know, Republican or something. So it's like, yeah, it's not even, uh, yeah, it's a much bigger, and especially like military, especially elite uh, kind of stuff. Did he go to college? He might have got, I, mean, I don't know if you. Hutch, I don't think so. But yeah, yeah, we, we don't really know. Like, yeah, his backstory isn't really, but the way his 
his wife, Carrie, you know, I, I would imagine his wife was a was a college graduate. She 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 gave the impression of someone who was, but yeah, but, she wears you know, a maybe. like a like a like a whatever like a you know business casual whatever. <laughs> and, uh, and they have a really nice house too. So I'm imagining that like she's fairly successful. And the other thing is, so her her brother, right, Hutch's brother in law, uh, owns that manufacturing company that he works at, or is it her, her, her father, her, 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 her in laws, father. whatever. Yeah, her family owns it, so presumably, like they're they're pretty well to do, or at least like you know, middle yeah. But class. they're they're independent business. They're independent business uh, of a family, so that that's yeah, that's not the that's not a that's that, that I think is another Republican indicator. Um, okay, and it's like a it's like a real job. It's not like a consulting firm or something. You know, <laughs> or, or DEI they're producing firm. real physical objects. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, every I, I think everything about this. Uh, yeah. You know, his dad adopted a black kid. Maybe that's well, <laughs> maybe that's something. His dad was yeah. FBI. Maybe his dad. Maybe his dad. You know, because of Russia Gate turned on Trump. I don't know. <laughs> like that's, like yeah. maybe he's so plugged into the national security community. He's like one of these, you know, like MSNBC experts who like you know goes from the intelligence community to like TV and like is really into like that's their identity. So like he's, but I don't mm. think he's that elite. He's like he's doing the dirty stuff. He's not like a, a high level government official or something. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah, sort of like I, the having, closer you are to reality. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm having a hard yeah. time. Yeah, finding many Biden Biden indicators in that in that story. All right. Interesting. Although you know Biden did do you know fa- fairly well with with uh, non college educated whites. So at yeah. least like better than Clinton, right? Yeah. yeah that's, yeah. that's yeah. a lot. Uh, that's a lot to overcome. And I don't think Hutch is. Yeah, Hutch is not very political. His, his interest, I don't think, is is high either. Yeah, that's he didn't have a. Yeah, he didn't have any sort of bumper stickers or anything on, uh, yeah, on his cars. He, he didn't care in, about In this Russia. house, we believe in science and all this stuff, right? He didn't, yeah. Well, yeah the like other thing is, the funny thing is, like, he, you know, he likes fast cars. Like, his neighbor, he steals his neighbor's, what is it, a Porsche oh, or something? Oh, right. Or Mustang or something. It goes zero to 60, and I'm about to find the fuck out. It's yeah. a cars guy. I mean, a car guy. He's not until I. You know, <laughs> Wait I a minute, but Biden science, is a car guy, though. <laughs> Biden is Biden is interesting because he's unique in today's because he he was grandfathered in right he yeah, started yeah, being yeah. a Democrat forty years ago and like guys like Biden were actually Democrats and he does win some yeah. of them over but yeah Hutch I think is like you know an extreme end of like what a uh, what a Trump supporter would be right interesting yeah 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 so I guess like that's probably why they made it apolitical because they knew that he wouldn't have shared their political like the producers knew that he wouldn't have shared their political yeah. sympathies although Bob Odenkirk like he was uh, making it and I, I think he's just a regular liberal I don't know much about his politics but I, I you know yeah uh whatever it wasn't it wasn't necessarily based on his you know value system the movie sort of well it was what it was yeah personal experience so yeah okay All right. cool. yeah man. so this was fun. Mm-hmm. I like this. Yeah, I, like this uh, I like this. I like. I like the, the analyzing the movie and analyzing sort of the the movie and its its cultural place. And uh, yeah, let's do it again soon. Absolutely. All right.